Hi, I'm Britta von Tagen and I'm on the NIA training faculty and I'm here at Studio NIA at NIA headquarters and I just wanted to have a conversation with you about the meaning behind the routine soul and how it's really impacted me and also um, my students. Uh, I feel very passionate about the background of soul and the, the honor of myself to the music, the Native American sounds that are in the routine soul. And um, I first of all would like to refer to the cover of Soul. It has a picture of Salagalal on it. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Uh, and it's a, a legend of a bear, a woman warrior, leader of people. And uh, she lives on the rocks. And it's actually a petroglyph in the Columbia River Gorge on the Washington side. And the story is that uh, Salagala looks after her people in Wishram, which is across from the Dalles in Oregon. And, uh, and when um, one day Coyote comes along, the trickster, and he says, Salagala, I need to tell your people that now men are going to rule the tribe. And Salagala says, no, 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 I will tell my people. And Coyote says, no, I will tell your people. And Salagala says, no, I will tell my people. So they get in an argument. And Coyote finally says, fine, you look over your people. And he casts her up on a rock. And now she's an image of a bear face with spiraling eyes in Horse Thief Park on the Washington side of the Columbia River. And, uh, and people that go and see her now, it's a huge petroglyph. It's like, it's like this big. And you look at it, and she has these spiraling eyes. And Salagala means she who watches. And uh, if, you, if you stare at it for a really long time, it's like you can see those eyes for the rest of the day if you go there just for five minutes. The inspiration for me whenever I do any kind of choreography is to be in nature. and. Uh, there's one hike that I allow myself to wear my iPod on, and uh, it's called Walk Around the Hill, and it's in Sun Valley, Idaho, and it's in the Elkhorn Hills, which are above the Shoshone Wintering Grounds, and uh, there's something really magical about that hike. Um, there's water tanks up there, which are definitely man-made. They're not ancient um, artifacts that there are these uh, water tanks that um, supply the town water if they need extra water in the winter. And uh, there, it has a flat surface that I can dance on, so I go up there and um, I, I know that the, the songs that come onto the iPod are definitely um, spirit chosen, so I put it on shuffle so they'll just play when I'm dancing on the water tank and then I choreograph based on what I see in nature or what I sense from spirit energy, I guess I would say. The focus of soul is the 52 moves and then the intention is being inspired by the music or allowing the music to guide every single move as sacred. So there's the sacredness to the moves. When we step in and into song one, um, we start with spear finger, and it really follows the the melody in the music. And there's also a shaker. So every time the arms are down past the body, there's a shaker sound. And then uh, when the guitar comes in, we do web spaces, connecting down to the earth, bringing the ancestry in, and then power finger crossover pulls that thread through a veil or through the curtain of the ancestors and puts them in the class or puts them in the tribe behind me. And then, uh, then there's parts where the music changes and we do palm directions and that, that definitely goes with the sound. So the sacredness of palm directions has a specific sound in the song. The song goes from upper extremities to core moves to bass moves. And then uh, uh, the way that the spine connects to the sound is really nice, or I feel works well. It is a click for me as a teacher, and I see other students click with it as well. Song two is May You Walk in Sunshine, 
And that song definitely reminds me of being at a powwow. Um, there's, in the chorus of that song, it's the shawl dancer, or the, the shawl dancer is, are the young women that dance at the powwow. And it looks like they're holding the ends, they're, they hold the ends of the shawl with behind them, and you can hear the bells ringing, which are actually cone-shaped um, tobacco can lids that are triangular, and when she dances, you can hear the bells. And I swear, it looks like she's off the ground, looks like she's flying. So when we get to the chorus in May You Walk in Sunshine, that's inspired by the powwow, or the Native American shawl dance at the powwow. Um, and then uh, when the song starts out, you hear a Native American chanting, and that's when we do the Nia move fist. And then we do creepy crawlers on the other side. So it's hi, 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 and then na, 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 na. So each move has a distinct sound in it. And then um, for the chorus, when we have the shawl dance, um, we actually do the Nia move, the sacred move, catching flies. So there's this action through the wrist and then spinning of the whole body to come around like they do at the powwow. Song three of Soul is Red Storm Rising, and we, I demonstrate strike and touching and balance finger, and then also claw hand, and uh, those particular moves definitely connect to the sounds in that song. And there's also a move in Red Storm Rising that is like the friendship dance at the powwow. Uh, in this routine there's a lot of traveling and this one is simply a cross front four times on each side and using the whole foot and really lifting up the legs as they do in the powwow and it's almost as though you can see the fringe moving as you do that move and then uh, the, the imagery of balance finger is as though you are standing on a cliff and looking out at the river if you're out looking at the Columbia River and then we do touching when the, the Native American is chanting and claw hand when it gets more intense. And so every single sound has that connection to the move so you can actually animate the form through the move of that song. Song four is called Warrior's Ring and the original choreography was designed as a salute to Carlos one of the co-creators of Nia. And uh, the song starts out like a trinket design, which is the name of the Alaskan Indian, American Indians. And uh, it's toes out and knees out, and it's very much like the, the shape of a frog from the trinket Indians. And, uh, and the dance is really about a life's passage and how Carlos in, inspired me and how he, how he went through his life in the beginning with Nia and then how he was young and then how he had the parts of his career as a grown up and now that he's retired. So it shows this whole progression through the song. And we start with chop cut and then we do finger flicks. And again, there's like a plinket design or if the actual art artifact were moving that's what it would do and then uh, and then we do the blocks we do um, all four blocks inward outward downward and upward blocks and then we also do a fancy step it's a one two cha 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 and uh, when you have the routine you'll know what I mean and uh, there's several ways that you can change it up for people um, you can have them stand with toes parallel and do the move rather than toes out and have them practice it. You can also tell them about the move before the class starts so they have a little bit of time to practice it. And then, uh, um, oh yeah, we also do hand pumps. So that song four has chop cut, finger flicks, hand pumps, and then all the blocks in it. And um, I would feel like that would be really the, the keystone or the centerpiece of the routine song for, and really about bringing the ancestry back to the practice or the meaning 
the meaning behind the routine so that while you're dancing it, it's this constant remembering or constant recapitulating of, of the focus of having the 52 moves be sacred and our ancestors and our teachers and everyone that have been a part of our lives um, giving gratitude to them and gratitude to the Native Americans. So song five of Soul is uh, called Victory Dance, and uh, I have to first of all say in the routine shoot, um, they actually got a different version. We got the copyright of a different version of it. My original version was five minutes, so I'm standing in front of the camera, and the song comes on, and generally what happens is people start screaming because they're shimmy, and we face the sky. And we all, and a lot of people are inspired to use their voice at this point, where it's ah, ah, ah. and uh, and if you have been to a powwow, um, you may notice or remember that that the drummers sit in a circle, and they're always men. I haven't or have yet to see women sit in a circle around the drum, but it's mainly men. Although men and women dance um, as um, as an offering or and also a celebration of the season change. It's mainly it's only men that I've seen play the drum, and they when they're all hitting the drum, this large drum that has animal skin stretched over it, they they throw their head back when they chant, and it's one person chanting, which is actually the vocal of the song, and then they all chant, which is the chorus, and so it's not necessarily the vocal. Uh, it is not necessarily the storytelling per se, but it's a it's one theme and then building into a multiple theme. So one person chanting, ha ah, ah, ha ah, ah, and then everybody chanting, ha ah, ah, ha ah, ah. ha And so victory dance makes everybody chant in the class that I've taught so far 115 times. <laughs> so uh, shimmy, we have shimmy, and then we have elbow strike back, and then we have shimmy, elbow strike side, and it was so funny when we were filming because the, the the version that we got is only three minutes long, and so to put all the elbow strikes, punches, shimmy, spinal roll, head and eye movements into three minutes on the spot, we had to stop the camera and I had to quickly make up the choreography to fit that variation. Um, you're welcome to change it if you'd like, just make sure you get all those moves in there, maybe note to self. Uh, I need to make sure and do spinal roll, there's two of them, head and eye movements, all the elbows, three elbow strikes and four punches. So that's a good way to do it. And then um, when I've worked with it more, the three minute song, is you can do shimmy, elbow strikes, and then you can do shimmies and punches, all the punches, and then the spinal rolls in the middle of the song, head and eye movements, and then you do the punches, or then you, do, you go through it all again. So you have the shimmy, elbow strikes, so the class can feel the patterning or the the sections of the music, how they evolve into each other. And um, that song always gets people yelling really loud. You not, might not be able to hear the music cue changes, so that's a good time to go turn the volume up on the stereo. And that is song five, Victory Dance. Song six in Soul is called Yanni Huwei, and uh, that's a longer song, and uh, it, it definitely, I would say this is this is a real gemstone in the piece, or I would also say it's like a garnet, a multi-sided uh, dodecahedron if you want to get super technical. Uh, it has um, undulation, uh, uh, chest isolation, fast clock, slow clock, and um, I think that's it. It's a, it's a, I think it's an eight minute song, um, but it really connects to the vocal in the song. The chorus has the same move every time and then when there's a man and woman singing there's definitely this contrast of a call and response type situation. So when you hear the woman's voice you take a step into fast clock and when she takes a breath is when we switch sides. So there's four on the right, four on the left for fast clock and then when the beat really kicks in that's the slow clock, hip bumps, oh that's right, hip bumps, pelvic circle, and then uh, the, there's this crazy cross front. I've had people call it everything from skate skiing to the rooster dance um, or to kicking sand. It's kind of like a modified cross front 
and in the routine shoot, you'll hear me say, um, or in the, the film's routine, I, I say cross front, no touchdown, no cha-cha-cha. And so you cross front, cross behind, and then you go through the whole pattern again, which is so um, relative to the brain and the way the brain learns. It's looking at things in terms of patterns or sequences that you show, and then you do a new sequence or, or series of movements, and then you come back to the first sequence. So this song is, is good like that. And then the ending is uh, definitely the call and response of the male and female chanting, and uh, it, it, uh, it, it really connects to chest isolation and undulation. And that's song six, Yanni Hue. So this is song seven of Seoul. It's Sue War Dance. And uh, the inspiration behind it is it's a great song that um, you can change moves every two bars. So I put all 27 bass moves in it, starting with closed stance, open stance, A stance, sumo stance, and, and so on. And uh, the way that the sound is in the music um, is definitely a way to support the change every two bars. Or it has this really repetitive beat, a really strong beat of a drum so that people connect to their bass. And then I love to say when I'm teaching class, bass in the spine, bass in the music. So people are super grounded and they're not um, tripping out or something like that. Um, so then we do all the bass moves and um, there's definitely certain sounds that go with each move. And then uh, this song makes me think of one of my students that was um, in her 70s that just passed away. And um, I remember whenever we would get to this song, she would ha ha make faces and uh, she's very animated. And um, that was from my water knee class. <laughs> and uh, I will always think of, again, the ancestors or the students or the teachers I've had throughout the years and Nia, mainly Nia. And, uh, and really put them in the class or put them behind me and dance with them. So rather than demonstrating and leading, it's more so here we are all together celebrating this dance of life. And, uh, and that song is really, uh, 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 it's very pulsing. So yeah, it's not usually for me like a leisurely listen, listening session. It's like, okay, I have a particular job to do in this song, let's go. And then the one thing I'd say to teachers is I know sometimes I get tripped up on the five and when I'm counting, um, the vocals come in and fade out, not on the one. So it's really important to listen to the ksh, the splash, that will set you on the one when you hear that sound. And then it, the moves are so repetitive and if your students are new, they can keep practicing the move and you don't have to worry about being lost. Just keep doing your front kicks until you hear the ksh, and then you can go on. And then uh, once you finish all the bass moves, there's even a review at the end of Zoo War Dance of the slow clock and the fast clock. Um, you can free dance with your students and give them some time to, to adjust. Um, or you can do another move that you felt like you didn't do enough. It has a nice long ending section of or long ending of free dance. Song eight of Soul is called Indian Trance, and it has again a really strong beat, very strong in the bass, grounded in the feet. And then by this song, you've done all 52 moves, so now you can have fun and play. Um, not that you couldn't before, and you can, uh, but by this song, it's like for me, I always feel like, whoosh, okay, we did all 52 moves. A note to self, once again, oh, I did all 52 moves, all the students did all the 52 moves. Now we can let loose a little bit, let our hair down. And, uh, and there's, um, there's a, a, again, the, the repetitive traveling, you'll notice a lot of the songs have um, traveling in directions and lateral traveling, which is so signature of a, of a Native American powwow, um, that when you get to Indian trance, um, the students generally start to walk anyway and feel the bass and the music with the bass in their spine and whole foot walking. And then uh, um, I would definitely say the inspiration behind this song is um, a dear friend of mine, my um, one of my DJs is um, here, uh, Sazevich, and um, she gave me a lot of this music and um, now is she, I would say she's Nia's DJ or we got the licensing of the songs now through our music guy Adam 
at the uh, headquarters. Um, this song is, is so, it's Indian trance for a reason. It's a time that you can just play, um, integrate, walking with a cross behind, again, no touchdown is what I say, or some people call it the rooster, or cross country, or uh, skate skiing, cross country skate skiing. And then, uh, and then it starts to bring you down to the floor in the routine, so you can go from cat stance to bow stance to making a fist in front of the heart that's um, very symbolic of the balance of masculine and feminine. And then um, we go through that twice. Well, every time we get to the chorus, I would say we, we, the first two choruses, we do the cat stance, bow stance, A stance, and then the last two times of the chorus, um, oh, I'm wrong. That's what we do the last time, but the first time we dance around in a circle like the shawl dancer and then center weight shift between both feet. Um, so the first part is catching flies and then web spaces and then we have finger flicks and fists and then it's the cat stance, bow stance, a stance. So the first two choruses are um, turning and A stance and the last two choruses are cat stance, bow stance, hands to the heart and then we start to come down to the floor. So um, even though the music is very ethereal or spirit driven, um, so people would have might have a tendency to trip out, the bass really brings them back to earth. There's this constant connecting back to the earth and every culture originally started with worship to the earth um, and that was part of um, their practice uh, on the earth like Mia is our practice now. Song 9 from Seoul is House Made of Dawn Light and again the inspiration for me is the shell dancer or the young woman dancer at the powwow and uh, um, it's very there's something that the, the, the song is really driven by flute now, so we're very grounded. The group is all warmed up, or I, I guess dripping like pigs, sweat, dripping sweat with like pigs. And then we lift the energy back up, and the flute takes the energy to the upper body, and we bring it down to the floor. And in the routine, we start to do floor play and move around with the support of earth, where I would say... Um, also, if you wanted to, or what I like to do is change it up and actually have people free dance with visuals, um, using any kind of visual of the powwow, the shawl dance, or walking in nature. Um, and then it's also a good time to review all 52 moves, or I like to say, um, I also like to say, oh, if you have a favorite 52 move or one that you'd like to practice more, now is a good time. And, um, um, it's, it's pretty much all floor work, and I can still hear that sound of the bells of the, on the shawl in my head. But. Song 10 is called Tears Alone, and it's, uh, again, really uh, a, a song that's pronounced by the sound of the flute, and, and now is, uh, the, again, the floor play after the cool down, and you can take people through a review as they're sitting on the floor, um, have them sit in what's called tailor position and do spear finger and turn the gestures or the, all of the moves into storytelling. So there's definitely this essence to it that's telling the story with the upper extremities or with the body as the song comes in and fades out. In conclusion, have a blast with this routine. It's very simple. Um, the feedback I've got is how easy it is, how grounded it is, and, and really honoring the source, honoring the Native Americans um, and all the people that put the music together for us, and um, really letting it be your personal practice or seeing it as a moving meditation. It doesn't have to be a dance competition. It's really about dancing with your tribe and um, feeling it as a pulse of the earth that everybody has that connection through the sound and the dance of Mia.